Good evening, friends. Um, let me see if my connection works because there you go. Good evening, friends. I would like to take this opportunity to greet each and every one of you at home and wherever you may be on this chilly evening in the Western Cape, chilly and very wet. Uh, in the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I would like to say peace be with each and every one of you, wherever you are. My name is Selayelo Aronsa and I was, I would be amiss to say that I was asked to talk about this topic, but I was bulldozed and forced to give a talk on tax matters and as a servant of God, how could I say no to the children of God, especially Ulucha? Um, may I please take this time to open this talk with a prayer. Let us close our eyes and bow our heads in prayer. Omoholo wena Jehovah, sinatla saluhodumo. We come to you, Lord, this evening, giving thanks and gratitude to you, Almighty God. For you are worthy, for Uktuniswa, Messiah, Unamandla Makulu, as we enter into this conversation and discussion about Izin Dozezulu, Tikal, Olungileyo. I ask and I pray, Lord, that you be with us, that you lead this conversation and this discussion, and that we talk about things that come from you. Through me, Lord, may your people and your children hear the truth that comes from you. Lord, in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, my topic today is going to be very short, and I would like to just give some ground rules in terms of how I'm going to uh, present the topic today. Unfortunately, we were supposed to be on a Zoom call and I had hoped that with Zoom we would be able to communicate together and have questions and make this an interactive uh, platform about text because a lot of the time people make text to be this horrible, horrible and daunting topic, but actually it is a very fun topic and that is how light-hearted I would like to present it today. When I was preparing my talk, I had to create a target market. And thank God the admins of this group um, have made it clear that actually the target market that I was looking at is the target market that I am talking to today. So if you're a high school pupil, I'm talking to you today because I'm hoping that in case you have no idea what text is about and you don't know what to study after metric, I'm hoping that this light-hearted conversation about text would interest you to enter and, and um, um, study text um, after metric. And if you're a student in an institution of higher learning, I'm also talking to you. But the first reason is sometimes we fail text at school because there is a perception that it is difficult. And sometimes we fail text in school because we do not understand text. You know, we think text is this big bad wolf. So I want to make it as lighthearted as possible so that when you are in a, in a university or college or Tibet college or wherever you are, you might actually consider a career in text. Uh, thirdly, I would like to talk to people who are entering the work market for the first time. You know, you sometimes are entering into a job and you have no idea what responsibility you have towards text and you probably think it is your employer's responsibility to talk about text and do tax matters and file tax returns. But now I'm talking to you so that you can hopefully understand tax a little bit better and be able to do your own tax returns or be able to understand the basics of what is required of you as a new employee. And lastly, I'm, lastly, I'm talking to new and prospective business owners. We are now in a very difficult time in the globe or in the world whereby people are losing their jobs and people are losing their probably only source of income. And now here is an opportunity potentially for you to start your own business or do something else and you might just want to know what is the basics or what are the basics when you want into, to enter into that particular market. 
Now friends, what I would love for you to do wherever you are is to get a pen and get a piece of paper so that you can make some notes as I talk. Um, the unfortunate part is that on Zoom, I, was, I had prepared myself that I was going to share some of the slides that I'm, that I'm going to be talking to. But now on this platform, I, well, I'm technology challenged at this uh, moment so I will not be able to show you some of the screens that I will be looking at you know whereby you could screen grab um, for your own purposes so now I would like for you to take a pen and a piece of paper so that you can make some notes as we talk about text topics that we would like or I would like to cover uh, because I only have 45 minutes to talk about this so topics I would like to cover, the very first one is the foundation of who we are as Christians, as a people of God. Text and the Bible. What is the Bible saying about text? That is the first topic I'm going to cover. Secondly, I want to talk about the background of text. Uh, thirdly, I would like us to cover the role players in the text cycle. And I will explain later why I'm, I'm calling it a text cycle. And fourthly, we're going to cover the different types of texts. Uh, and then we're going to talk about the types of income. Um, then we're going to talk about customs and excess, which is another form of tax. And then lastly, we are going to talk about where your tax goes. We are busy paying tax and you're busy being loyal to the government, but where does your money go? That is the last topic that we're going to cover. So now friends, text and the bible in as much as we have a few scriptures that talk about text and the bible or in the bible i would like for us to look at three scriptures and hopefully we can interact with them in terms of who has to pay tax why do we have to pay tax do we even have to pay tax the first scripture is found in the book or in the gospel according to saint matthew chapter 22 and we shall read from verse 19 until verse 21. And it comes from the Christian Standard Bible. Matthew chapter 22, we read from verse 19 until verse 21. Just to give you a background of this particular scripture, this was a time when the Pharisees were wanting to trap Jesus about the payment of tax because they were against the Roman Empire at the time. And they sent some of their disciples to trap Jesus and ask him questions regarding tax. And then in verse 19, Jesus says to them, show me the coin used for the tax. They brought him a denarius. Whose image or inscription is this? He asked them. Caesar's, they said to him. Then he said to them, give then to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. This is the word of God for the people and the children of God, and we give all the thanks for the word of God. In this instance, friends, I took the liberty of, because, you know, of, taking, of taking out the highest note I had in my wallet so that we can understand what Jesus was talking about. Now, when Jesus asked them to give him a coin and I deliberately did not bring out a coin, but I brought out a hundred rand note. So Jesus asked, um, whose image is this? And whose inscription is this? The same thing applies today with us. There is an image of a person now, Dadu Mandela, on our notes, and there is an inscription. And if we had to answer Jesus today when he says whose inscriptions in this we would say the government of South Africa because this is the coat of arms of South Africa therefore Jesus would say give to the government what belongs to the government and give to God what belongs to God so it is important as Christians that we do give to the government what belongs to the government and that is in the form of Texas Machampura the second scripture, friends, that I would like for us to look at comes from, this, from the book of Romans, chapter 13, verse 7. Romans, chapter 13, verse 7. And it reads thus. That is also why you pay taxes, because the authorities are working for God when they fulfill their duties. 
at this point, Paul was actually saying to Ibanjala Maroma in Dogobana, the reason why you pay tax is because people who are in authoritative positions are doing so because they are doing it for God. Everything comes from the authority of God, and even governments come from the authority of God. So when the SARS and the government in South Africa want us to pay tax, they are doing and uh, performing the authority that comes from God. So tax is a godly service and responsibility that we need to do, uh, to pay. On that note as well, if you look at the chapter of on the Bible about this very book, it says a Christian's duties to the state, which means that paying tax is your Christian duty to the state. So if you refuse to pay tax or if you avoid tax, you are not lying only to the government, but also you are lying to God because it is your spiritual responsibility to pay tax. Finally, the last scripture that I want us to look at is Luke chapter 3, verse 12 and verse 13. Luke chapter 3, verse 12 and verse 13. Now, as a background uh, to this scripture, this was when John the Baptist was baptizing people and everybody wanted to be baptized. And they were coming to John and asking him, what can they do, you know, after they're baptized? And the tax collectors also came to John to be baptized. From verse 12, the scripture reads, tax collectors also came to be baptized and they asked him. Teacher, what should we do? He told them, do not collect any more than what you have been authorized. This, friends, is the word of God and thanks be to God for his word. So in as much as the Christians, as Christians, we have a duty to the state to pay taxes. The state also has a responsibility to God not to take more than they have been authorized to take. So SARS has no right to take from you more taxes than they are supposed to take. Now, what is tax? Some of you might ask, and especially those young people in metric or in high school, wanting to find out what exactly is tax. And some of the definitions about tax are it is a compulsory contribution to the state revenue. Compulsory being an operative word. And tax is levied by the government on workers' income or business profits. Or it is added to the cost of some goods, services, and transaction. So tax is added to the cost of some goods. Not everything incurs tax. For instance, bread, because it is such a staple and a need for us, bread does not incur tax, milk does not incur tax. So that is why you, there is no VAT added to bread and, and the like, and to books, because books do not also incur tax. And essentially, in simple terms, tax is an amount or a percentage of money that you have to pay to the government so that the government can either pay or provide public services. So without us, you and I paying tax, the government is not able to provide public services or it is not able to pay for those services which are provided to us. And this also comes, we'll come back later to it when we talk about the tax cycle. And how is tax levied? Tax is levied in twofold. It is levied to individuals or a company and this is when part of your income or your profit is levied to the government. And on the other part, tax is levied to goods. So when goods are being taxed, a percentage of the price of such goods is paid to the government. So that is what tax is and how it is levied um, to other individuals, companies, or to goods. Now, point number three that I wanted us to talk about is the role players in the tax cycle. There are four very important role players in the tax cycle. The first role player, and this is the most important role player in tax, and that is you. Yes, you. Without you, there is no tax. Without you, there is no tax payment. So you as an individual, as an owner of a company, as a director, as a company, 
you as the text payer are the most important role player in the tax cycle. Now, when you pay tax, you pay tax to the South African Revenue Services, SARS, uh, or, the, or as it was used, used to, to be called, it was the Revenue of Services, or ROI. So you take your taxes. The most important person and part of the puzzle takes the taxes and pays it over to the South African Revenue Services. That makes them the second most important part or role player in the tax cycle. And then what does SARS do with that tax? All that SARS does is they collect the tax. They do nothing else as far as your tax is concerned. So they take your tax, collect it, and then they render it to the national treasury. Now the national treasury is the head of us. It is the head of the government. So this is a department that decides and allocates where taxes are supposed to go. And this is where the Minister of Finance also falls under. And then after the National Treasury is the South African government. I'm hoping that you do not get confused when I talk about the government and then there's SARS and you're thinking, but SARS is also the government. And then there's Treasury. Oh, but the Treasury is also the government. And then if you're a political person, you're saying, oh, but the people shall govern, which means I'm also the government. So basically everybody, all the role prayers here are, are the government. But for purposes of your understanding, the taxpayer, when every time I talk about the taxpayer, I'm either talking about an individual or a company. Every time I talk about SARS, I will, state, I will state very clearly that it is SARS. And when I want to talk about the National Treasury, I will refer to them as Treasury or the National Treasury. And then when I speak about the government, I'm referring to the national government, provincial government, or local government. So that is how I would like for you to follow as I, as I go through my talk about tax. So now as a taxpayer, who is a taxpayer? The taxpayer is you, a company, or a trust. Um, and you pay tax based on your personal income. By personal income, I mean your salary, I mean your commission, I mean interest accrued, I mean fees paid to you. Any amount that you receive, regardless of what it is, that is, that is regarded as your personal income, and you pay tax based on it. Um, as a South African with a, with a personal presence or a physical presence in South Africa, they refer to you as a resident. So as a resident, you will be taxed on your worldwide income. You are not only taxed on the income you receive when you are working and staying in South Africa, but you will also be taxed on the income you receive from your overseas, either investment or income. If you, as an example, if you work for a company that sits in Canada and does not have a presence in South Africa, but you receive income, uh, so that income will be taxed using South African tax laws. However, as a non-resident, uh, you are taxed on the income which you receive from a South African source. So if you're a non-resident and you receive income from a South African source, um, maybe the South African uh, police services or a post office, but then you also have another income which you receive from Timbuktu and you have another source of income that comes from Switzerland, those other sources of income will not be taxed based on South African law. So they will not form part of your taxable income and they will not even make, be part of your personal income when SARS speaks about your income. Um, and then you as a taxpayer, you could either also be a company or a close corporation or a trust. And then you will be taxed based on your annual income. So you look at all your income for the year and then that is the amount that you will be taxed on. Now, coming to the, to the next person, uh, the role player in the tax cycle, the, the South African Revenue Services, which is SARS. It is our national tax collecting authority. That is all it is. So if you feel that services are not delivered, you cannot blame SARS for the services not being delivered because SARS has nothing to do with delivering services. The only service that it delivers is the collection of tax. All taxes are collected at a national level and only SARS, which is the South African Revenue Services, is mandated to collect taxes. 
and it administers the South African tax system and the customs service. So all the administration of our taxes, whichever way it administers it, SARS decides how that is how it is going to be administered. Now SARS is an autonomous agency, which I like and sometimes I find funny. Um, and what this means is that the only law that or the only rule that SARS receives is that you need to collect taxes. That's it. So that's the only thing SARS takes from anyone. SARS determines its own preferences. So SARS determines how it is going to function. It determines its own policies. It determines everything that it does. It determines even the administration um, processes that it, 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 it creates to collect that services. And everything that it, it, it decides by itself, it translates into authority. And SARS comes to us and says, this is how we are going to do everything. Agreed? And the country says, agreed. No one fights with SARS, but I think it's also because they're doing such a great job. So in essence, SARS decides the amount of tax it is going to collect. The government does not t tell SARS how much it needs to collect at any given point in time or for any particular fiscal uh, uh, um, tax year. SARS decides by themselves. And also, if SARS somewhere down the line feels that it is not going to meet the, the target that it set for itself, SARS comes back to us and says, you know what, we actually decided that we're going to reduce that. And then he says, agrees, and then we say, agree. And then everybody is happy. Uh, one of the mandates of SARS, and this is something that I love, and I thought I, I would just share with you. SARS encourages on, uh, compliance with tax and customs law to ensure that everyone pays their fair share. SARS does not in any manner, or we do so in a manner that does not unduly impede trade, economic growth, and development by imposing excessive and unfair administrative burden on taxpayers, on traders, and businesses, and to achieve compliance in the most efficient and cost-effective manner. This is exactly what the Bible says in Luke 3, chapter 3, verse 13, that you don't collect more than you are authorized to. So SARS is actually saying, we agree with the scriptures when they say we will only collect what we are authorized to collect, and it has to be fair for everybody. Now the National Treasury, how do, how do they fit in the whole tax cycle? The National Treasury manages South African government's finances. So all of the finances that the government has, it is managed by the South African Treasury. Every single cent. So their responsibility is for good governance, transparency and social progress. And the last part is the one that actually is very, very difficult, you know, um, bearing in mind that there are so many people in the country who feel like they, they see no social progress in their lives. There's no progress in their lives, but everybody else or those who are mandated to pay tax do pay tax. Now, it is the national treasury that allocates taxes to the different departments. It is not SARS that allocates taxes to any department. The only thing that SARS does is collect. That's it. And then the National Treasury will now allocate taxes to different departments based on the budget reports that it receives from all of those departments. They also provide for equitable distribution, not equal distribution, but equitable distribution of nationally raised revenue between national, provincial and local governments. And they also monitor the implementation of provincial budgets. And we know with reports how these provincial budgets go. Um, and finally, the optimal allocation and utilization of your financial resources in all spheres of government is used to reduce poverty and vulnerability among South Africa's most marginalized. That is essentially what your tax needs to do. It needs to make sure that it reduces poverty and vulnerability amongst the South Africa's most marginalized. Not blacks, not whites, not coloreds, not Indians, but all of those who find themselves marginalized within the system. 
Now, the Minister of Finance falls within the National Treasury under the leadership of uh, Bawuti Dombowin. And National Treasury is the head of the economy, and the Minister of Finance is the heart of the economy and the fiscal um, development. And the aim that the finance ministry does is to advance economic growth and development. Growth to make sure that the government gets more money and they make more money, and then to make sure that we, our social standing is development and progresses because of such. And therefore, it strengthens South, Af South African um, democracy. The South African government, what does it do? Now, by the government, I'm talking about the national, provincial, and the local government and everything that it is mandated to do. They utilize the finances provided by Treasury in order to pay for or and provide public services. They need to provide education, the roads, the schools, um, social development, everything. All of those things are the responsibilities of government. And for them to be able to perform their mandate, they need to, we need to make sure that we pay our taxes and it goes back to the, to the government. Now, who benefits from all of this? It, is, it comes back to you as the taxpayer. You benefit once again from all of the services provided. And then so the cycle continues and it never stops. That is why I call it the tax cycle and the role players in the tax cycle. Now, as a taxpayer, new taxpayers, now I'm talking to you, you're a new employee, you have no idea what to do, you don't even have a tax number, and you have no idea where to start. The first thing, once you have an income, you have a responsibility and you are mandated to register as a taxpayer. When you register as a taxpayer, it does not necessarily mean that you are eligible to pay tax. It just means that you are now on the system and SARS knows you as someone who receives an income, regardless of how much that income is. You need to take your proof of identification, whether you're an adult or a minor, uh, your proof of address and your, bank, and your proof of banking details. Now, generally when we talk about things, we talk about as an adult, 18 and above, 21 and above. But when it comes to being a taxpayer, there is no age limit. A two-month-old baby can be a taxpayer because we want our babies to be on adverts, on brands and all of that. And then that baby earns an income. So that baby needs to be a taxpayer, to be registered with the SARS to be a taxpayer. So you can be a taxpayer from any age for as long as you earn an income. Now let us talk about the types of income. There are many other types of income, but there's only four that I, that I just want us to, to look at, which I think a lot of people gravitate towards. You have your employment income. Now this is income earned in South Africa by a non-resident, which will be subject to a normal tax in South Africa, unless there is a double taxation agreement and the DTA states otherwise. But if that money you are, you have a presence in South Africa, you are earning a salary and it is from a source in South Africa, you will be taxed based on normal tax laws. Now there's pensions and annuities and this amount received that constitutes a lump sum, a pension or an annuity from a pension fund, your pension preservation fund, your provident fund um, and your provident preservation fund as received or accrued in South Africa. Just to say maybe something very quick, especially at a time that we are in lockdown and, and um, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, you find yourself without a job. You were working before COVID-19 and then during COVID-19 you are retrenched for, because the company cannot keep you anymore. Then you find yourself without a job. But then the company says, we will pay you everything that is due to you. Meaning if you are contributing to a provident fund or a pension fund, the company says, we will pay you all of those things. Now that money comes as a lump sum. Please listen very carefully. If you receive that lump sum, it does not necessarily mean that you have to take or withdraw all of that lump sum and then spend it because there will be tax implications on that lump sum. 
you need to only take that which you need and that which is permissible by SARS. And we'll also talk about that at a later stage. So that also forms part of income. And then there is interest earned. If you are, if you are present in South Africa for more than 183 days on aggregate, so most of the year you are in South Africa, an interest received by or accrued by you from a source within South Africa is subject to normal tax. Now you have investments and you are receiving interest based on those investments. You have investments in South Africa and then you have investment in a company in the company in the USA and you accrue interest based on those investments that you have. The investment which you accrue, the interest which you receive from a source of from a source in South Africa will be taxable by South African law. But interest accrued from an outside source, a source that is outside of South Africa, it will not be subject to South African laws in terms of taxation. And then there's rental income. This is specific for people who have been working or you are lucky enough to get some cash and then you're able to rent pro or to buy property and lease it out. This is where the property is used on a day-to-day -day basis. Expenses such as rate and taxes, bond, interest, insurance, and repairs may be claimed as deductions. I'm going to cover it later on. So if you are receiving rental from somebody, you, you, you are a landlord and you're receiving rental, that rental forms part of your income and it will form part of, uh, of your taxable income when we get to the part you will up, hope that you understand it. So these are the types of income that I want us to cover in this short time. For purposes of understanding, maybe when I was talking about salaries and interest, you did not understand, or maybe you thought maybe there's another in, 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 um, income which you receive, which I did not talk about. The extensive definition by SARS or from SARS of remuneration or income, it says. Remuneration means any amount which is paid or is payable to any person by means of salary, leave pay, wage, overtime pay, bonuses, gratuity, commissions, fees, pension, super, um, superannuation uh, allowances, retiring allowances or stipend, whether in cash or otherwise, and whether or not in respect of services rendered. <laughs> That was a mouthful, I know, but I hope, I hope because you have a pen and a paper, I hope you got that. So your income is a vast majority of things, not just one thing, because you think you have a salary, you think that is an income and that's it. It's all the other things combined. Now we want, let us talk about income tax. What is income tax? Income tax is your normal tax. We call it normal because it is a direct tax, which is paid on your taxable income. Income tax is not just paid or levied on your income. It is levied on your taxable income. So you have personal income, but you also have taxable income. And then I will also tell you how to calculate your your taxable income or to determine whether you qualify for, um, for taxable income which makes you qualify to either pay tax or not pay tax now i've, I've i think i've spoken about these in um, um uh, previous remuneration uh, profits or losses income or profit arising from an individual being a beneficiary of a trust trust fund babies that is an income and it is liable for income tax your director's fees, if you're a director in a company, your director's fees uh, form part of uh, income tax, investment income of, uh, from interest, annuities and royalties, pension income and the like, all of those form part of income tax. Now, individual tax rates. This is another slide that I wanted you to see, but unfortunately, I'm going to have to, you're going to have to work with me here um in order to remember the numbers because now we're talking numbers individual tax rates for the year 2020 
and 2021 tax year. If you earn a taxable income of one until 205,900, you will be liable to 18% of taxable income. That is a minimum that you will be liable for. And then it goes all the way up, up until you, uh, you actually are levied or liable to pay 45% of taxable income above 1,577,300. And, and these are the numbers. I'm hoping that I can give this slide or some of these facts to the admins of this group so that whoever wants to know, or I can leave my details at the, at the end of, of the presentation so that if there's something that you could not get and then you want to, uh, um, to get back to, you can just contact me and then I can gladly assist you with that. Now there is what we call a tax threshold. There are, there's a tax rate and then there's a tax threshold. Now tax threshold is an amount of income below which you do not pay tax or you do not pay any income tax. Now the threshold, it determines who qualifies to pay tax. If you're under 65 years of age, your threshold is now, it has been increased to 83,100. So if for the year you earn less than 83,100, you are not liable to pay tax. Yay. I had a conversation with someone who was saying SARS should actually um, reduce tax for certain people in order to augment or to come to assist those people who are struggling with black tax. It is my belief, friends and guilders, that some of these measures that SARS puts in place is to lessen the load that we have as people who have things like black tax. You have so many people relying on you and you earn minimum income or you earn 83,100 per annum. So if SARS taxes you, it means they're taking more money away from your pocket. But if they're saying this is the threshold, so it makes it, you are now able to support your, your, your family financially and do other things that you, need, that, that you need to do as a person and as an individual and as a taxpayer. The 65 year olds and 75 year olds, to be honest with you, if you are part of this um, uh, live video, you are not part of my <laughs> of my of, 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 of my target um, audience but just to appease you if you're 65 years and older your threshold is 128,650 and if you're 75 years and older your threshold is 143,850 but I see Kolapo because Gildas there are no Gildas who are in that threshold right now, there are rebates which we get, uh, tax rebates which we get when we are taxpayers. We have primary rebates, which for the year 2021 is 14,958, and then it gets lesser and lesser based on your age. The 65 year olds and older, their rebates is 8,199, and the 75 years and older, which become tertiary rebates. Um, they are rebated for 2,738. Now, part of your part of your income tax and income tax calculations, you do have credits. When they talk about credits, it is a good thing. So, some of the credits that you have, it is a medical aid or medical tax credit, the MTC. This, I want to explain this in simple terms. You have a medical aid or your your, um, yes, you are a member of, of a medical aid and you pay your medical aid. So part of the SARS saying we want to make it better for you and bearable for you to be able to do certain things, they give you credits on medical aid. So for a taxpayer or a member or a dependent of a medical scheme or fund um, where the taxpayer yourself is not a member of a medical aid fund. Now your credit will be 319 rands for the year, for the tax year 2020, 2021. If you're a taxpayer and one dependent in respect of two dependents where the taxpayer him or herself is not a member of the medical aid, 
your credit is 638 rand for the 2021 tax year. And every time you have an additional dependent, you receive 215 rand credit on medical aid. There are so many things on this slide and I, I wasn't going to show you this slide because it's just, it was just going to be information overload. Now, when you file your tax return, and I'm going to get to that later, but I want you to remember this, claiming medical expenses. A lot of people are losing in, in getting refunds because they do not claim. You pay for medication over the counter and you do not claim when you file your return. You go to the hospital and then they say, this is not covered or the doctor does not take medical aid, they, they rather take cash and you pay cash to a particular doctor. You do not claim that from your, from, um, from SARS, you lose money. So there are expenses which you incur, which are deductible at the time of you filing your tax return. Please, friends, I am tired of people saying, I'm always owing SARS. Yet there is just admin that we need to do yet and we are failing to do, which makes you feel like you are losing money. But you just need to be vigilant and consistent in the administration. You just do it once a year. And now SARS has a system, uh, an electronic system, whereby you can just populate it as you go along. If you go to the chemist today, you have a script of medication, you pay cash for it. Once you come back home, you take whatever you paid, you populate it into a spreadsheet and, it, and so you do it for the whole year. Come uh, time for you to, to submit your tax return, everything is there, it is done. And you've claimed for everything that you have paid for, which was supposed to be paid for by your medical aid. Now, this is specific to people with disabilities. Sometimes people think because you receive a grant, if you do receive a disability grant, you think, well, that's it, and then that's where everything ends. It is not where it ends. If you are a parent and you have a dependent with a disability, there is a 33.3% of fee paid by the person to, uh, to a registered medical aid, right? So there are ways whereby you can claim some of these um, funds back because of that particular disability, but then it has to be specific to the disability. As an example, if you have a dependent that, that, that uh, lives with or suffers from albinism, you cannot claim for a wheelchair or cost of a wheelchair unless your, your, your dependent suffers from albinism and is wheelchair bound. So if you are living or suffers from albinism, you can claim for things like sunscreen because it relates directly to your disability. You can claim for sunglasses because it relates directly to your, uh, to, your, to your disability. This is another thing that you must please take heed of and make sure that you claim all of these things. You, it is your money that you've been paying and you deserve to get it back. Credits and incentives. We pay tax. When do we get incentivized for paying tax? I already spoke about medical tax credits. There are tax rebates. I've already stated them earlier on. There are corporate tax incentives, but these have been a thorny issue for taxpayers and for individuals, for people and for the population for many years. Corporate tax incentive intensives are intensive uh, are incentives that big corporations get. Uh, they can get they claim for, for for taxes and all of that and therefore they end up paying less tax but the government has also found that these uh, corporations are also avoiding to pay tax and they find loopholes that are around these incentives so this year the commissioner of sars has introduced the sunset clause as at february 2022 which means that well, now it is, it is um, in discussion, but if everybody and all the role players agree, in February 2022, it will be the end of corporate tax incentives. And the more money you make, you will pay fair, taxes fairly, as SARS says, everybody should, uh, should pay. 
I also want to bring to your attention the COVID vet relief fund for vendors. If you are a company and you are a vet vendor and you're registered for vet, you now can claim your vet refund ASAP and you receive your refund within 21 days. And the reason why SARS is doing this is because so many people are not able to get money. You know, business is slow. It is difficult for everyone. It's to make sure that you get money in your pocket that is due to you. So if you're a vet vendor, please make sure that you submit your vet refund ASAP and then you will receive, you should receive your vet refund within 21 days. That is another incentive. And the last one that I just want to state to you is tax-free saving contributions. These tax-free saving contributions have been increased, thank the Lord, to 36,000 rands per annum. Friends, guilders, youngsters, please, 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 you need to find tax-free saving accounts and um, uh, investments because those will help you a great deal and then you can claim a whole lot of uh, you can claim as part of your incentives if, as you do your your tax returns it is very important but i want you to know that these savings are not for people who want to get rich very quick these are in order to prepare you for your old age or for your pension well when you say old age some people say it's not old age for your mature age so you need to find these some of these are government bonds you need to invest in government bonds because you don't pay tax. There are tax-free savings, so uh, saving schemes. So you need to find out these schemes and save as much of your money as you can using these schemes because they are for your benefit. At what point do you not um, file a tax return? If your total employment income for the year before tax is 500,000 or less, you are registered as a taxpayer, but you do not file a tax return. These are two different things. You are going to register as a taxpayer because you earn an income, but you don't have to file a tax return because your income does not exceed 500,000 rands. But there are conditions to it and you must receive this income from one employer. If you receive income from multiple employers, it falls away. It means you need to file the tax return. Uh, you must also have no other incomes, meaning you must have no car allowance, no business income, no rental income or any other income, fees and interest and the like. Once you have those incomes, then it falls away. It means you need to file a tax return. Um, I've already spoken about the car allowance. Uh, and it also means that you don't have any ad additional allowance tax related deductions. We spoke about medical expenses. If you have medical expenses, then it means this falls away. Then you need to file a tax return. So essentially, it must be a person who meets all of the four requirements in order for you not to be eligible to file a tax return. Let us talk about tax exemptions. At what point are you exempt and what amount of my income is exempt from tax? Interest is exempt from tax, but it must be interest that is accrued from a South African source. It must be earned from a South African source, and it must be up to 23,800 per annum. If it is more than that, then it is not exempt uh, from income tax. Uh, interest earned by a person 65 years and older, up to 34,500 rand per annum is also exempt from income tax. So you need to check your interest and you have more interest. Just take what is exempt from tax and save your money. I spoke about rental income earlier. When you do your tax return and when you calculate your taxable income, rental income forms part of your taxable income. However, there are expenses which are deductible from that income, which means that you can save money 
if you incur these expenses yourself. Let me make an example. I am a landlord. I have a tenant that is occupying my property. That tenant pays me, uh, pays me rental income every month of 10,000 rents, as an example. Now, that rental income forms part of my personal income when I calculate taxable income. But then I have responsibilities and duties to that particular property because it is my property. Rates and taxes are my responsibility. Rates and taxes can be deductible from your taxable income. Garden services, some of these things, because SARS will need proof that you do have a tenant and this is the income that you get from that tenant. And that proof is basically your, um, your lease agreement. In your lease agreement, friends, you need to be specific about who is responsible for what. Who is responsible for garden services? If you, as the landlord, is responsible for garden services, all the money that you spend on garden services, because you do not live in that property, you can deduct them. So they are deductible, meaning it is a saving for you. Security, you're not living in there, but your property, you need security for your property. If you are paying a armed response company for security purposes on that particular property, that amount is deductible. Interest on the bond that you pay is deductible. If you, when you advertise that property, you used either a, uh, I'm sorry, my kids are complaining. If you used a, a, a an estate agent and then they charge to advertising, you need to, re that amount is deductible from your taxable income. So you need to keep proof that you've paid your estate agent this much for advertisement or for advertising. Or if you incur that advertise, those advertising costs, you deduct them from your rental income. Insurance on the property is deductible. Let me be clear about insurance. You have insurance on the building. You own the building, bricks and mortar. Insurance on the property is deductible. However, insurance on the household content is not deductible. So you cannot go to SARS and say, I've also insured my tenants uh, microwave and TV and therefore I need a refund for it. You will not get it. So you need to know exactly uh, what is deductible and what isn't. Wear and tear or repairs on the property are deductible. So what you pay to repair the property is deductible. I need to also state this very clearly. Repairs and maintenance is not improvement these are two different things so the improvement on the property is not deductible but wear and tear and fixing the roof and fixing the leaking house uh, fixing the cracks all of those costs painting the house to make it look nice but in its original state all of those things are deductible from your taxable income so if you are a landlord please 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 you need to keep all of the receipts of all the costs that you incur and the expenses you incur on the property. And when you file your tax return, you need to claim them. Otherwise, you're paying, you're playing with, um, with money. Companies trust and small businesses. Now, um, you know, everybody now wants to be a business owner. Everybody thinks they're an entrepreneur. I want to register a business for this, that, and the other. It is very important for you to note which tax or tax bracket your business belongs to and what kind of business that you are um, registering and you're going to be a part of. Now, the financial year ending for businesses is April 2020 until 31st of March 2021. If your taxable income as a business is 83,100 or less, you do not pay any tax on that particular income. Remember we said businesses are taxed on your annual income. So if your annual income is 83,100 or less, 
you do you pay zero percent of taxable income and the higher it goes there are different tax brackets that your business will fall under please familiarize yourself with all of those figures as a company you pay company income tax we call it sit as a person you pay personal income tax we call it pit so now the minimum income tax for a person is 18 percent and companies are taxed at 28 percent of the taxable income that is again another some uh, another thing that you need to note if you want to be a company owner um let us now talk about customs and excise a lot of people do not know that there are two types of taxes we have direct taxes which is what i've been talking about since i started talking and then we have indirect taxes which is customs and excise and then there is a tax which forms part of both direct taxes and indirect taxes and that is value added tax which is vet the 15 percent you pay you can be levied on direct taxes and it can also be levied on indirect taxes it is just calculated differently if you want to calculate to calculate how much tax needs to be paid for whatever you need to pay tax for um, customs and excise is basically the imports exports international trade manufacturing warehousing and distribution of goods that is how tax is levied on these two types of taxes and the revenues generated ge revenue generated by these duties and levies account an amount to approximately 10 percent of the total revenue received by SARS. indirect taxes amount to approximately 10 percent of the revenue that SARS receives every every year and your personal income tax your company income tax, those um, amount to approximately 87% of the revenue that SARS receives every single year. So if you are not paying tax, you are denying us service delivery, you know, and, and service to be delivered because the amount that we pay constitutes 87% of what SARS um, receives in a year. Excess levies, and I want to talk briefly about excess levies so that we understand. And I hope you guys are not going to be mad at me when I talk about things that you are not happy that I am raising. Uh, so excess levies are duties and levies which are imposed mostly on high volume daily consumable, consumable products. High volume daily consumable products. And these are alcohol, petroleum, and cigarettes or tobacco products. And they are also levied on non-essential or luxury items. These are electronic equipment and cosmetics. We do not need perfumes. We do not need lipsticks. We do not need makeup. We want them. They are luxuries. So they are therefore levied as luxuries and non-essential goods so the primary purpose of excise levy is to ensure a constant stream of revenue for the government with your personal income tax you you submit your return once a year but with excise levies you submit your returns either monthly or quarterly depending on which industry you fall in therefore this makes it possible for the government to always receive money and revenue constantly every month basically that is the, the that is the primary purpose of excise the primary purpose of uh, rather the secondary purpose is to discourage consumption of certain harmful products the reason why sars calls this sin tax is because it is harmful these items or products are harmful to the environment and they are also harmful to the to us to the person these products we i spoke about uh, petroleum earlier on 
Gas is harmful to the environment. It does not matter how important we think it is. It is harmful. And that is why it is levied at the rates that it is levied. Alcohol is harmful to our bodies. That is why it is levied the way it is levied. Tobacco is harmful. That is why it is levied the way it is levied. So it is important for SARS to make sure that the tax imposed on these products discourage the use of these products. Some of the products that maybe I can just throw in there are perfumes. Perfumes is not a need, it is a luxury and it is harmful both to the ozone layer and to our bodies. But we love them. But then that is what um, excess levy is. Value added tax. I said to you earlier that value added tax, it is both a direct and an indirect tax. So it is indirect tax levied on the consumption of goods and services in the economy. Consumption, the use of these goods, then we add VAT to them. VAT vendors, I spoke about VAT vendors earlier on. If you are a VAT vendor and you're registered, remember about the COVID relief fund or refund um, that you are eligible to and i hope that you take advantage of it vet vendors are businesses who register and charge vet on taxable supplies and services when you register a company it does not automatically make you a vet vendor it does not automatically mean that you have to charge vet on the goods and or services that you render <clears throat> pardon me a taxable supplies uh, made or to be made is in excess of 1 million rand in any consecutive 12 month period. If you are not making or rendering services to this value, you don't have to register as a vet vendor. However, I have seen that in businesses, a lot of people would want to do business with someone who is registered for VAT because then it gives them a little bit of credibility and it asks them to claim their VAT back, which they charge on their goods and services. Now, with this COVID and also to fast track applications for VAT, as of the 25th of May 2020, SARS has issued that it will issue VET reference numbers immediately to all applicants who submit through e-filing or work-in channels. And now we also heard that they, you don't need to walk in in the SARS office. They have created a form which you just fill in and then you get someone who assists you immediately. This also avoids the long queues that our people find themselves standing on day in and day out at the SARS offices. It is really unnecessary and I think this is long overdue for SARS to be able to assist people electronically because most of the people are not able to transact electronically. I spoke about the COVID bed relief fund. I'm not going to go into, go into details um, anymore. Now, what does your tax money do? A lot of people come and say but we pay money what does our money do your tax money assists the government to provide services that's it the roads that we drive on the government has to make those um, uh, user friendly electricity supplied um, public transport education system um, and all of that that is where your tax money goes to however let us speak the truth. The truth of the matter is that not all of our tax money is used for what it is supposed to. That is why you find people in rural areas, children still learning under trees, in mud schooling, yet trillions and trillions of rands are being collected by SARS every year. That is unacceptable. There's a few things that I want us to talk about which hinder progress um, for the government to provide services to us. The first thing that hinders progress, that makes people not want to pay tax, is corruption. Corruption, corruption, corruption hinders progress and it does not assist the national treasury in wanting to alleviate poverty. 
So we need to get rid of corruption. We need to get rid of corruption anywhere where people are working with money. If you're dealing with people's money, you need to be truthful and honest, fair and just in how you deal with that, with that money. Fraudulent claims is part of corruption. If you are not submitting all of your documentation at, at SARS, it's part of the corruption that is a problem in making sure that we receive everything that we need to do. None payment of sec or, or, or of tax is a problem theft is a problem greed is a problem where you send um a we know now with with, with, with these uh tenders you send a tender you say this is what i'm going to to render the services i'm going to render and then you don't render those services but they have been paid for such behaviors are what hinders us from rendering the services that we actually need as taxpayers. The second part that I want us to talk about is incompetence. There are people sitting in positions they are not qualified to perform or they are not trained to perform and therefore they become incompetent. That is also something that hinders progress and service delivery in our society. That is, that is one thing that we, we, we really need to make sure that we get rid of. Getting jobs in the get back door, you know you don't, you don't qualify, you're paying someone to give you a job. All of such behaviors are behaviors that we need to get rid of as society. Now, some of uh, the issues that we have, we sometimes complain that the government is able to go to the deep, dark, dingy rural areas when they want votes, but they are not able or maybe they're not willing to go to those places to deliver services. That is something that we ourselves need to do something about. And please note that the Commissioner of SARS is always willing and able and ready to listen to us. If you have ideas about how we need to combat some of these societal ills, let us, let us, let us make our voices heard. Um, I wanted to talk about, to talk briefly about uh, the church, the, especially the Methodist Church of Southern Africa with regards to rental income. I do not want tomorrow the church to think that I said they are renting the, the, the properties to the ministers. We, for as long as our ministers are living in a man's or in a property that belongs to the church, that is not rental because they are not renting the property. You are giving them use of the property in order for them to perform mission work that they need to perform. So that does not constitute rental income income because you they also do not pay you as the Methodist Church of Southern Africa any income for that use. However, all of the costs that you incur as expenses to that particular property can be claimed when you are trying to, to make sure that you qualify you you meet all of the requirements uh, with SARS and also to get our tax clearance certificate. We know there were times when we did not have the tax clearance certificate and it has a ripple effect on other businesses and mission work. So that is all I had for you friends today. If you have any questions, I know this was not the greatest of uh, platforms because it was not on Zoom and we could have engaged and you could have seen some of the slides which I was presenting on, which I think were, were very useful. Please give me a shout. My Facebook name is Selayolo Mukhali Arense, double barrel. Uh, my email address is Selayolo Arense, one word, at gmail.com. If there's anything that you probably missed or you thought I was just talking about too many things at the same time. I am more than happy to engage with you and assist you wherever you need to be assisted. Just a point to you as a taxpayer, be smart and file smart. Use e-filing for as far as you can. It is easy for you, it saves you time and it also saves you money because you don't have to go to SARS offices. You need to engage with SARS on www.sars.gov.za and contact the, the contact center on 08-0000-7277. Another point to ponder, if you need somebody to help you with filing your tax return or yeah, rather your tax return, 
please make sure that you use the SARS employees before you go and pay somebody to do it for you. You can also save money there. Sometimes you realize that uh, filing your tax return is so simple. You just need to add whatever needs to be added and you subtract whatever needs to be subtracted and then you know it is done. And then somebody says to you, I'm going to charge you 5,000 rands for, per hour. It is 5,000 rands that you could have saved if SARS could have um, assisted you and if they make a mistake, it's on them, it's not on you. So you also share the responsibility in that regard. Uh, I don't think there's anything that I have missed. Thank you so much. My great thanks to the admins of this group. All of you young, young people are doing a great job and may God bless you and increase your blessings every single day so that the lives that you touch, the information that you bring on this platform is invaluable and it is exactly what young people want to hear. Let us pray. For these moments of grace, for these moments that humble us day in and day out. Lord, I pray that your children have heard what your word says about taxes and they have heard what the authorities say about taxes. And I pray, Lord, that after today, we will relate to taxes in a different manner, in a jovial manner, in a cheerful manner, and in a loving manner. Because these taxes are what makes it possible for us to receive the services that we deserve. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the government and the people in authority and acknowledge that they are in that authority as per your authority and under your authority. Lord, we thank you for such an amazing grace. Heavenly Father, as we go to sleep in the evenings, please, Dada, be with the people who are sleeping outside in the cold as we are sitting warmly in our homes. Lord, guard them. They are your children too. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, bless the Wesley Guild of Southern Africa in the Methodist Church of Southern Africa. Bless all the young people. May they be part of the growth of our country and any country that they belong to. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Thank you.